Well, hey, this is Mark the Mind Coach. Well, in this video, we're gonna show you a simple process on how to stop cravings, how to stop that craving towards, in this particular case, chocolate. Identify your triggers. When you think about chocolate, what pictures do you make? What sounds do you hear? What do you, do you hear someone saying something? Do you say something to yourself? And what feelings and whereabouts is that feeling in your body? What I want you to do is identify your process, your strategy on wanting chocolate, desiring chocolate, craving chocolate. When you're craving chocolate, do you get a picture? And where is that picture? Is it big, is it small, is it cut, oh, is it black and white? <clears throat> is it moving or still? Notice how, you, how, when you think about that craving, think about chocolate, what do you notice? What pictures do you see? And then also, the use of the pictures, the sounds. What sounds? What are you saying to yourself when you think about chocolate? And then the feeling. Whereabouts is the feeling inside your body? What shape is it? And how big is it? Is it moving or still? When you notice that when you have that desire, you're craving, there'll be a movement. There'll be a process that you follow. You'll get a picture say something to yourself, then you'll have that feeling, you'll conjure up those feelings. So in order to create change, you'll identify how you do the process to begin with. When you think about chocolate, when you smell chocolate, you see chocolate, what is the process that you follow? What pictures do you see? What sounds do you hear? What feelings do you feel? And notice the position of the pictures, the position of the sound, and the position of the feelings. And I imagine there might be taste and smell, in it as well when you're thinking about chocolate. When you have that desire, when you have that craving for chocolate, what do you notice? What pictures do you see? Where are the pictures located? What sounds do you hear? Where are the sounds located? And the feeling, where's the feeling? How big is the feeling? Where is it in your body? And notice where it is. And then take a snapshot of that. Okay, so put that aside over there. So that's your craving, that's your process for desiring chocolate clear the screen. So now what I want you to do is identify something that you dislike, something that you hate, something that you do not like at all. Something that may look similar to chocolate. You may be able to think of something that's similar, a waste product that's similar to how chocolate looks. And if you're thinking of that thing now, you may notice the smell of Poo. If I were to say poo, what do you notice? Feces, poo, smell, chocolate looking, and notice the pictures that you make when you think about poo. And how big are the pictures? Are they big, are they small? What location are they? Are they color or black and white, moving or still? The sounds, what do you say to yourself? What do you think about when you think about poo? And what do you feel? What are the feelings? and notice the feelings when you're thinking about poo. And the smell, I don't know whether you've tasted poo before, you'll get that conjuring up of ugh, disgust, usually when you think about poo, if you've got poo on your hand or poo under your nails, or if you've ever stepped in dog poo or manure, when you're walking along and stepped in it and it releases all that smell and odor. And if it's fresh, it's warm and going up through your feet and through your uh, toes, or it gets stuck on your shoe, and no matter what you do, that smell seems to follow you around. See, what we're doing, we're identifying the, how we view poo. And what we wanna do is identify the pictures, the sounds, the feelings, what we say to ourselves, the smell, the taste of when we're thinking about poo. Okay, and take a snapshot of that. You know, notice uh, the location is in a different location to that other thing that we just did before. <laughs> and notice what you're saying to yourself. Notice the smell. And notice the feeling of, you know, when I was talking through those scenarios that you may have experienced before. Or, you know, going into a public toilet and you go to sit down and someone's left their little deposit behind or their large deposit. Ugh. 
the smell, you know, the, the sounds of someone doing a poo, yeah, all that. Ugh, disgusting, gross. That dislike that you have towards poo. Okay, and I want you to notice the pictures and the sounds and the feelings of that situation, that poo, when you think about poo. It's not nice, it's gross, it's disgust, and, and I want you to, to allow that disgust to really intensify so that you know where the pictures are, you know where the sounds come from, and the feelings where the feeling are when you think about poo. Okay? Clear the screen. Okay, we'll put that over that side. So you've got the thing that you like over here, which is chocolate, and over this side, you've got all that, the picture sounds and feelings of poo. And what we wanna do is we wanna mix them up. And the reason that we're mixing them up is because we wanna change our internal representation in such a way from uh, this thing over here to this thing over here so that it loses its power, loses its compulsion. So then uh, it no longer has control over you and you decide you can stop now. Now, what I want you to imagine is the chocolate over here. Okay, the picture, sounds and feelings of the chocolate. Okay, and you're stepping in that, you see that and remembering the picture, sounds and locations of where you, poo is. And I want you to put the pictures of the pictures of the poo and the sounds were the sounds of when you're thinking about poo and the feelings of where those feelings are when you're thinking about poo. And notice how it's different. Notice it feels weird. You know, it might feel awkward. When you're thinking about chocolate, all you can see is poo. When you're thinking about chocolate, all you hear about is what you say to yourself. When you see poo, when you step in poo, when you smell poo, when you, it's almost like you can taste the smelly, disgusting poo. And then the feeling, ugh, that feeling of poo and the scenario of when you've experienced the smell, the feeling, the, the visualization of poo. Gross! And you're allowing that, all that to be in the, the submodalities or the location of, of how you see poo. And step out, whoosh, clear the screen. Stepping in, how you view chocolate, putting them in to how you see poo. The pictures where poo is, the sounds where poo was, the taste where poo is, and the feelings where poo is. And stepping out. Stepping in to how you view chocolate, moving the pictures where poo was, the sounds where poo is, and the feelings of poo, and stepping out. Now stepping in, thinking about chocolate, moving in the location of poo, the sounds, the feelings of how you view poo. Stepping out. What do you notice when you think about chocolate? may be a little bit awkward, a little bit, you might be able to taste, almost like tasting that smelly, disgusting, runny poo smell. <laughs> Clear the screen. Okay. Spell your name backwards. Okay. Now, stepping in to seeing chocolate, moving that in the location of poo, seeing how you'd see poo, hearing what you'd say to yourself when you see poo, the feelings of stepping in poo, smelling poo, almost tasting poo. When you think about chocolate, thinking about poo, thinking about chocolate, thinking about poo, thinking about chocolate, hearing what you say, smelling poo, thinking about chocolate, smelling the disgusting smell of poo, stepping out. So when you think about chocolate now, what do you notice? Step out. All right, let's intensify this. Alrighty, so when you're stepping in, thinking about chocolate, making the size of poo, bigger, bolder, brighter, making the sound of that poo, when you're thinking about poo, bigger, bolder, brighter, chocolate equals poo. What? Chocolate, ooh, it smells like poo. Ooh, chocolate, ooh, looks like poo. Ooh, 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 when I'm thinking about poo, the feeling, ooh, chocolate, ooh, think about poo, feeling poo, ooh, it's disgusting. Ah, okay, what do you notice? Step out. Clear the screen. 
All right, so you're walking down the street in the supermarket and you go past the chocolate aisle. What do you smell? Oh, poo. What do you see? Oh, poo. What do you walk in? That, oh, that feeling of oh, poo. What do you notice? You begin to notice and see that your internal representation of that thing that you may have liked before no longer has that power because every time you think about chocolate, you can smell poo, you can see poo, you feels that feeling of if you've stepped in poo and the smell sort of gets into your nose on your shoe sort of hangs around like a bad smell and you feel oh in your stomach that feeling of oh you wouldn't even imagine and you're thinking about chocolate you got this chocolate bar and it all dribbles down you is that smell of disgusting poo chuck it away Clear the screen. Taking a big breath. Think about minties. Have you ever had a minty? You had a minty in, you chew it, and that fresh taste, freshness, smell in your nostrils. So now someone has offered you a chocolate poo. What do you notice? Ugh. Do you notice you sort of move away from it? You have that feeling, ugh. I wouldn't like it. You've got to identify how you see that th certain thing that you want to change your compulsion or desire for it. You've got to change how you feel about it. And the better or more intense the pictures, the sounds and the feelings are of the thing that you dislike and you move the pictures, the sounds and the feelings of that thing that you like to something that you absolutely dislike and you link them in, lock them in, seal them away. Locking it in, you notice that you have a totally different view on that thing that you once desired, once wanted. Okay, it's been two or three weeks. You've, you've changed that internal representation. You've moved those pictures and sounds and feelings into the location of something you absolutely dislike. Gust. You just dis, dis, absolutely dislike so much that you just do not want it. Do not want it. Do not want it. Because all you can see, all you can taste, all you can smell is that disgusting poo. Disgusting, warm, festy, fresh poo. It's like you can almost smell it. And it's on your hands. That that poo smell is on your hands. Because if you ever had it on your boot and it just, or your shoe, and it just doesn't seem to get off, it sort of lingers. Imagine that smell lingering on your hands. It's like you can smell it. And it doesn't matter. And, you, and even though you're unwrapping this wrapper, the smell of poo just seems to permeate up your nose and it's on your taste buds and all this poo smell and taste is just and it doesn't matter if you keep washing your hands and notice that oh you can still smell it and it's just oh that disgusting smell of poo clear the screen when you think about chocolate what do you notice about it now now if you follow this process you would notice that you have a different perspective and it feels different inside your psychology right now well this is mark the mind coach i hope you've had an enjoyable process sometimes it's not an enjoyable process because it can be so disgusting when you create the massive change in something that you once liked to something that you disliked and you know you can swap it back if you really want to change it but if it's something that you need to reduce or uh, stop in your life right now, then it's a very powerful way to create massive change, flipping the switch, turning off that once thing that you had a desire for and a craving for is now something that you disgust and do not want anymore in your life. Comment below and tell me how this process has helped you change something from what you liked to now something that you disliked. Something that you craved to something that has no longer any power over you right now. This is Mark the Mind Coach. Have yourself a fantastic day.